many of these crimes occur openly on public transport. Only recently, a gang shouting glory to Russia attacked an Armenian teenager, Arta Sartayan. Arta didn't survive. This is the, the train that Arta took home every night from work. It was only two stations away from home, Pushkin Station, and these guys got on the train and changed his life and his family's life forever. In the early 90s, Arta's parents, Edik and Irina, fled the anti-Armenian pogroms in Azerbaijan and came to Moscow hoping for a better life. Instead, they lost their son. Despite fearing for their own safety, they've agreed to talk to me. The investigator told me that there were two attackers, but near the entrance door to the carriage was one more. The third one, who was watching. It sounded as though it was an organized group. He was such a skinny boy, he had a very thin neck. What was there to cut up? But they stabbed him six times in the neck. What for? Why was my son, whom I raised, to whom I gave all my love, all my tenderness, why did this non-human kill my son? A real man would never attack from behind. Only traitors, only weaklings do it. A strong person would never behave like that. People who hide them are also weak people. They teach to attack secretly. They never say things to his face. They are rats. They are cowards. The authorities define this as a racially motivated crime. However, as yet, nobody has been charged and the case is gathering dust. Irina now refuses to let a surviving son take public transport. But every day, she has to take the train on which the attack took place to work. Now all she wants is to leave Russia, a country she hoped would be their haven. Restaurants taken over by home cooks. They've planned and prepared to cook.